two. Hey everybody, welcome back to Pushing Pixels. I'm your host Sam Mestis and we're going to do a second tutorial for today. And uh, we're going to do this Mad Max image that uh, we did in class. Um, I believe this might be a Cory Barker project. I think we started it as that, but we kind of threw our own spin on it at the end. So uh, it's sort of like that, but mostly I'm just using the media, not so much the tutorial. Let's take a look. Maybe a little tutorial. Anyway, go see Cory Barker online. He's awesome. All right, here we go. So uh, I have this uh, photograph of Monument Valley, and uh, honestly, I just I don't want everything. I just want I just want the ground. I don't want the sky. So uh, whoa, that was wild. So I'm going to use my quick selection tool right there. Okay, and I am going to select my sky. I got pretty good with that. Did I turn on my hotkeys? I did not, so you can't see what I'm doing here. There we go. That'll work. Awesome. Okay, so uh, I got a lot of it here with my quick selection. I'm going to keep going. I'm not too worried because we're going to uh, we're going to screw with this picture anyway. So I'm not going to be too worried about being accurate. That looks good, though. I don't want the sky, though. I want the ground, so I need to invert this selection. Uh, select Inverse right there, or Command-Shift-I, either or will do. And now my ground is selected, and I'm going to hit Command-J and get it on its own layer. That's pretty good, right? All right, so let's keep that for now. And um, I have a new document over here. It's uh, I think it's 5 inches by 8 inches, something like that. It's pretty small. But for this, it'll be perfectly fine. All right, I'm going to grab my ground and drag it over, holding down my shift key, and make sure it is right on bottom, and free transform a little bit, just to uh, scale scale it down just a hair. I want a little bit more, a little bit more of that guy. There we go. Let's try that. Perfect. I don't need this anymore because I'm done with you. All right, we got another picture now. We got to open, and we need some. We need to replace that sky with some new sky, and I am going to use this guy right here. But mostly, I'm just using the sky. I'm going to uh, grab the layer, hold down Shift, and drag that layer over, and make sure it is underneath my ground there. You can get rid of that. Don't need that. But I only need the sky. I don't need all that mud. So I may have to scale this thing up a little bit so we only get sky that's actually pretty good right there look at how nice that is now you can see on the on the on the background i have a little bit of fringing going on we'll get rid of that in a while all right so now we need to uh we need to give this image some purpose and uh to do that we need to add a couple things so i downloaded this bus this damaged bus from Pixelsquid.com. You should go see Pixelsquid. Those guys are awesome. Great accounts and a lot of models and a lot of stuff you can use. I'm going to actually drag this one over to my project. Oh, I see why. I was like, that was weird. And I'm just going to put it in there for a minute and uh, put it on the layer above. Close that out. And uh, get it in there. And... Uh, just to sort of comp it in. It's a little big. I'm going to bring it down in size just a little bit, holding down my shift key. And uh, I'm going to have this thing go off the edge just a bit. I think that looks, break some continuity a little bit. That's not too bad. And uh, what else do we got? We have, we got our, um, our lonely guy, our, our Mad Max guy. Let's use this photograph here. And we're just going to steal this guy. Not that. Boink. This guy right here. And we're going to do that again with the quick selection tool. That guy right there. And as soon as I pick it, there we go. And I'm just going to grab him. And I'm not too worried about being that great about him. He's going to... because. He's going to be off in the distance. It doesn't matter too much. Um, this time, since I got him selected, I'm going to take the Move tool, V, right there, and I'm going to hold on my Alt key, and I'm just going to drag the selection over to my project. I don't need that guy anymore. And I am going to scale him down quite a bit. And I have to keep an eye on perspectives here a little bit because he really can't be taller than the truck. All the perspective lines are going sort of at the center. Whoop. Return on that. 
this is our horizon line, so everything's sort of heading from corner to corner all the way down here. All right, that's pretty good. Um, it doesn't quite look real enough though, so let's. Um, we got to give him a shadow. So new layer underneath him, blank layer, and we're going to command click this layer. So hold on your command key and click the picture, and I will get a selection of that guy, right? And on that layer I just made. I'm going to fill it with black. And since black is my foreground color, I'm going to just hold down Alt and Delete, and it'll fill with black. Now, you can't see it because he's obviously underneath that, but there he is. All right, so I'm going to free transform him, and just like the other tutorial, we're going to flip vertical. He's got to be upside down, and then I'm going to move him accordingly. The next thing I'm going to do with him is that shadow looks weird. We need to uh, fix the distort on it. And in reality, I'm going to move this guy a little bit down the road a little bit. And maybe scale him down just a smidge. All right, back to the shadow. Um, free transform. Right click. Distort. And distort lets you grab these, uh, these corner pixels if it lets me. There we go. It lets me grab these corner pixels and adjust accordingly. Just like that. And uh, and I'm going to turn this down to about ooh, maybe 40. Lighten that shadow. That's not too bad. Look at it. We already got something fun going on here. Okay, what's next that we need to do? Let's look at our original because this we can see what we're going to build here. We're building this guy right here. So you can see we got a lot going on. Ooh, you know what I need to do? On this bus right here, this guy, he's kind of not in color match with a lot of stuff and there's a way around that. I have this piece of rusty old metal, right? I'm going to drag that into my scene and make sure it lands over the bus there. Click. So it's over the bus. You can't see the bus there because of this guy. And uh, maybe if it'd help if you did that. There we go. So let's make sure that whole bus is covered just like that. And I'm going to clip this to the bus layer. So if I hold down my Alt key, and uh, let me put that on. So if I hold down my Alt key and click in between the layers, you see I get that little turn down arrow with the square, and I click, and it now clips. It uses the bus as a clipping mask, and you can see it. There it is. It's kind of weird. I'm going to change the, the blend mode to overlay, and uh, I'm going to turn the opacity down a little bit. But now you can see it's sort of toned the bus a little bit, so it sort of matches the atmosphere a little bit, right? Not too bad. I'm going to get rid of that. All right, we need a title, because uh, look, look at our other one. Our other one has a title on it. And we're going to put that fire in there, too, maybe. But let's do the title first. Um, I actually have the um, that title right there. Look at that. And I'm going to open that bro that crazy metal, ugly metal thing again, right? There we go. And uh, there's my title. I'm going to hide our working project for a second. So there's our title. And I'm going to grab our metal again. Hold on shift, drag it over, and scale it up. Free transform. And I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger than my text on each side. Just a little bit larger. And then I'm going to clip again, just like we did before. Hold on your Alt key and click between the layers. And there you go. Pretty slick. Let's get rid of that. Uh, a couple things missing here, though. Um, we need a drop shadowing, some beveling, things like that. So I'm going to do a bevel. And I'm going to keep this bevel almost nothing. Maybe four. You can kind of see it a little bit. Here, let me turn this guy on. So you can sort of see it there, the beveling. All right. And then maybe an outer glow, something really subtle. That's not too bad. I'm going to let you adjust a taste, but uh, I just have to have a black, a very slight outer glow on that, and it kind of gives it a little space. And then maybe um, a drop shadow. Nah, we don't, I don't want a drop shadow. How about a gradient overlay? Oh, my God, look at that. A black and white gradient overlay set to overlay, and I have it turned at an angle. You can kind of see how that's working. Stuff we've all done in class before, so that's a nice little overlay. Let's just keep that. All right, my Mad Max looks pretty slick, right? Not too bad. I'm going to merge. I have two layers here, and I'm going to merge those layers 
to one layer, but I also want to keep those layers intact. So I am going to hold down my Alt key and pull this little menu down right here, this little guy right here. Alt and pull it down and do not let go of your Alt key till this whole thing happens. I am going to merge visible layers. And when I do that, it merges everything to one layer. Boing. There it is right there. Bob. There it is right there. It took my two layers and dumped them to one layer. All right, let's go back to our working project, which was here. Bing. All right, that's pretty slick. All right, and we're going to drag over that layer we just made over to here. And it's super huge, so we're going to scale it down quite a bit. And I'm going to keep going a little bit. And I'm also going to stretch it out a little bit. I'm going to hold my Alt key down and click this middle one, top one or bottom one, it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to make it a little bit taller than it is wide. I'm just going to stretch it out just a little bit. All right, that looks pretty darn good, right? Okay, we're back. I found my fire. So let's, um, I'm going to grab this guy right here. Since I got him selected, hold down my Move Tool V and hold down Alt and just drag him across. And that is too much. By fire. That was a pain in the butt to find. Being free transform this command T. And I'm going to shake this thing down. I'm just going to go right on top of this bus. Right here. And maybe squish it down some more. And I like that. Now I'm not going to get out of free transform yet. Because the great thing about fire and water is you can warp it. So I'm going to use right click and hit warp. And I'm going to shape it to the top of this bus so it kind of curves around a little bit and sits on the bus in a fun way. I'm going to have it go in front of that sign right there too and maybe that's perfect. Now the bus is on fire. Why? Who knows? I'm going to get rid of that. I don't need that guy anymore. Delete. Alright, so um, I think we're looking pretty good. The thing we need to do now, as you'll notice, is um, we toned this quite a bit. Oh, I forgot my I forgot my dust. Let's do that. Right in front of the mountains. Boom. Right there. We are going to um, do a couple things. Um, what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to do that dust. Before we do the dust, let's make that sky... Let's pitch that sky green. And the way we're going to do that is... Um, I will come back to this. I'm going to reset. I'm going to set colors. Boom. Boom. Okay. Curves. Oh, wait, that's overly. Right. Okay, I'm back, everybody. Three, two. I'm back. Um, had to go find my colors. I couldn't remember what the colors I used. Okay, so the first color I used is uh, over here. It's a sort of weird aqua green sea foam. I don't know what you want to call it. Here's the number for it, though, if you want. Uh, 2F6E5D, if you want that. And then the second color is this sort of yellowish beige-ish, kind of beige-ish. And that number is DDC887 if you want those colors. Anyway, the reason I picked those is because we're going to go to the gradient tool right there. And we are going to do a radial gradient, this guy right there. And we're going to do it. Let's pick a good place for it. It's got to go it's got to go behind this behind the ground and uh, in front of the sky. So that's where it'll be. And make sure my yellow is on top. And I am just going to pick a spot right here and go like that. And I'm going to set that layer to overlay. And i got to be honest with you, I'm not overly excited about that. Let me try it again, maybe. That's fine. That looks pretty good. It's not too bad. All right. So let's get into this now. I think we got everything we need on here. Pretty sure we got everything we need. Um, hey, go to that rock layer right there. Your, your rocks, your ground, whatever, your valley. Uh, click that layer and go to layer... 
matting, defringe, and just let it go by one, and it'll clean up all that fringing in the background. Perfect. All righty, let's figure out what else we need. Let's, uh, we're almost done. Let's make this look a little nicer. Um, I'm going to grab an adjustment layer down here, the circle, half circle, and I'm going to pick curves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the whites up just a little bit, right? And then I'm going to grab the, the handle down here on the blacks and pull those blacks a little bit. And that gives it a nice, a nice pop a little bit. It takes the whites and sort of thins out the grays a little bit. So that's not too bad looking. Um, one more thing we're going to do, though, before we get away with this, is I used a, uh, I don't remember what color lookup I used. Um, crisp warm. All right, let's try that. All right, so let's grab one more adjustment layer down here. Pow. And we're going to do color lookup. Color lookup is so fun. And uh, after you have it there, make sure these two layers are on the top. I'm going to go to this top one here and pick crisp warm. And see, look what happens to my image. Oh, man, that's pretty nice, right? A little bit too nice, if you ask me. I'm going to tone it down a little bit. What did I do on my other one? Ooh, where I, no, I kept it at 100, huh? Crisp warm look. Interesting. All right. Oh, because i got to put those black lines in. That's why it looks a little different. All right. Crisp warm. Let's see. Maybe throw up a little of the curves. Crisp warm. That's pretty hot. A little bit too hot. But for now, it'll work. Um, okay. One last thing. On a layer, let's put the let's put it right underneath. Let's put it underneath this. Put a brand new blank layer there. Okay, blank layer, and reset your colors. D, so black is foreground, and let's do another gradient. G, and we're gonna go gradient to transparent. That guy right there. And from the top, I'm gonna pull a little black down. Whoa, I don't want it circle. We gotta be in linear mode. So uh, this mode right here. I'm going to start outside and go there, and I'm going to start up here and go there, and maybe turn it down just a little bit. It's a little bit hot, but now it looks pretty slick. Uh, one last touch I would probably add is a lens flare. Let me go find a, a lens flare in my tools and right there, and uh, let me see if I can find a lens flare that I like. I like them all. Let's do that one right there perfect I'm just gonna pull it down here I'm gonna drag the layer across I want it to be it's gonna be up top it's gonna be over everything and let me get rid of that we don't need that anymore and set the blend mode to screen obviously and I'm gonna desaturate that and there you go I'm gonna move it up I'm gonna set it kinda of like right between here and maybe and maybe I'm gonna stretch it out just a little bit hold down my alt and my shift there we go all right, that looks pretty wild, everybody. I got one more thing I want to do. I forgot about. I purposefully forgot about it. Um, I'm gonna go to my color selector here, and I'm gonna use my picker, and I'm gonna pick that sort of beigeish thing again. All right, perfect. And right above the land, the ground, please. Right above this, get a sort of blank layer, and I'm gonna grab a brush, a very big, soft edge brush, soft round, and that one's actually perfect and I'm literally gonna paint across right there I may even make it a little bit larger not that large how about here real look at that and I I might try setting the two overlay and see what happens I don't like that so I want to put some atmosphere a little bit of dust and I'm gonna just I'll take it all the way down to 50 we'll just split the difference and now you can sort of see what a difference that makes it kind of it kind of neutralizes a lot of things and gives the image a little bit of balance um, so not too bad, and uh, I think that's pretty much it, yeah, that's pretty much it. This one's a little bit different, a little darker and moody, but uh, that's how I do these uh, these sort of little projects like this and build these uh, and build these looks. Still honoring rule of thirds, even though I don't care, and uh, it looks kind of cool. All right, everybody, that's it. Um, tune back in again and have a good weekend. Stay loose.